Hey YouTube, welcome back to tutorial number 18 and in this video we are going to continue looking at background images uh, because last tutorial went on for quite some time um, but yeah I uh, this is exactly where we left off I had a background image in the body of my website and I also had a uh, background color on my paragraph so I want to show you guys now um, by the way, this is the CSS for the tutorial. Uh, I want to show you guys now uh, how to use the background shorthand property because we've taken a look at using background size, background image, background color, uh, background repeat all individually, right? And we can use them all individually. It's just a little bit annoying. Uh, and so sometimes you might want to use the shorthand version of this, uh, which if I pull up my notes, uh, and I copy paste this across here. Um, the shorthand property is simply just using background uh, and then placing all the values in in the correct places. But if you're going to use the shorthand property, you have to learn uh, this, right? Uh, now, this look, looks confusing at first, right? But this is background. Uh, so that's the property. Then we need to remember color goes first image goes second, uh, position and size go third uh, and fourth. Whether you want it to repeat or not, that's fifth. BG origin and BG clip, we don't actually use all that much. Um, so, you know, uh, you can get by without those. And I'd, I'd also say initial or inherit. Again, something that we don't really need to worry about all that much. We don't need to use all that much. Uh, BG attachment though, this is something I haven't talked to you guys about and I should probably uh, mention or spend a few moments talking about this as well. Uh, but basically background attachment just lets you determine whether your background should be fixed when you scroll or whether it should scroll with the background. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Those are the two values, fixed and scroll. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll spend a few minutes talking about that uh, towards the end of the video. So let's take a look at using this background shortcut. Now, um, if I uh, jump back over to the browser here, well, I haven't actually saved this text in the text editor. So let's save this, come back over to the text editor and hit refresh. Okay, so right now we've got a blank body, nothing's in or on it. Uh, and let's style this body with uh, the background property. So I'm first going to give it a color of black. And if I save this and come back over to the browser and hit refresh, you can see that the body now changes to have a black background. Okay? I can also add in my background image. So let's go URL and um, put in my image name. So uh, selfie dot JPEG. Please make sure you use the re correct file extension. This is something that uh, already in my images tutorial, um, a few tutorials ago, there are people messaging me and uh, telling me that they've had some mistakes somewhere along the line and it's always got to do with using the incorrect file extension. So uh, just make sure you use the correct file extension. Okay, save this now come back over to the browser and hit refresh. And now you can see I'm using my selfie uh, picture in the background, but my picture is overlapping the color. So we've got a color behind the picture. Uh, and that's why we can't actually see a black background anymore. But if I had transparency on my picture, or let's say I set my picture to no repeat, um, then I should definitely be able to see the background, right? So wherever the picture isn't, now I can see that the background is black. Um, let's go back here. So we've got no repeat. Just remember, if I want to set a size or a position, I need to uh, put that over here before no repeat. So let's say uh, position. I haven't actually talked to you guys about this either, but position has a bunch of different values. So we can have center, which will put our background image in uh, the center of our content. Um, and you'll notice that right now, 
uh, you'd expect it to be here somewhere in the center of the browser, but it's only going to the center of where our content is. Uh, so because I've only got one paragraph and that paragraph ends here, that's where my picture is. It's centered um, in the middle of the browser here and in the middle of our content um, here. So if I add, if I go back to my, my text editor and I just add uh, a bunch of these so that it goes you know, all the way down the page, uh, you can see now my picture is in the middle of the content further down. Uh, which doesn't really make sense when it's a small image like this, but let's say I change this to the large background. So background dash large. Um, and I come back over to the browser. Ooh, that is my email client. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go back over to the browser and uh, hit refresh. Um, okay, so now we've got the image back there. Uh, and it is in the center. Um, so that makes more sense, right? Uh, but now I also need to set uh, a background size because we've got it set to center. Uh, and by the way, this could also be left. Uh, it could be right. It could be uh, right center. Is it right center or right center? Something like that. Uh, there are a bunch of different values. You can play around with those and see where the image pops up on the screen. Uh, but I'm going to set this equal to center. And then I also want to set a size of cover. So let's save this and uh, come back to the browser, hit refresh. Okay, and cover, uh, if you guys remember from the previous tutorial, just makes my image uh, fit the actual width of the screen, right? So there we go, it fits the screen. Uh, and if I scroll, it scrolls with my image. You'll notice how, uh, okay, I have to do it on a smaller browser or a smaller size browser. But as I scroll, the picture goes up with the screen. Um, so that is where uh, the next uh, property comes in or the last property, which is background attachment. So you can set this equal to fixed. Um, which means if I jump back over to the browser now and I hit refresh, uh, if I scroll, the image in the background is not moving. You can see that it's, it's very clearly not moving. But if I set this to scroll, which is the default value, then um, if I jump back over the browser, refresh, and now I scroll, the image is going with the content. So um, you can watch with this orange as it goes up and down with the content. So uh, that is the difference between having a fixed background and a scrolling background. And that is also how to use the background shorthand property. Uh, I hope that this tutorial was uh, informative and I'll see you guys in the next video. I just want to send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design, and web development. And they can teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field. And they'll do it within 12 weeks, which I think is a rather impressive timeline. So go ahead and check out their website. The link is in the video description. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Hey, thanks for staying until the end of the video. That really means a lot to me. Now, while you're still here, there are a few things that you can do to help. First of all, if you haven't already, subscribe and watch another one of my videos. And if you wanna help me make more content more often, or if you feel that my content is just worth paying a little bit of money towards, you can check me out on Patreon. You can also check me out on social media. I will leave the links next to me. So go ahead and click on something and I'll see you guys next time.